This presentation is going to teach you all about the cell organelles. First, let's start with a quick review. All living things are made of cells. So as you can see in this diagram, which is basically a magnified um, piece of a plant cell from the stem of a plant, the stem is not just one solid piece. It's made of these little bubble uh, circle shaped things. And those little circles are known as cells. All living things are made of cells. Anything that's alive now or ever was alive is made of cells. Cells are the basic unit of living things. So now let's look at organelles. An organelle is a specialized subunit within a cell that has a specific function. So let's break down all of these words. Uh, specialized is something that has a specific job. So I am specialized to teach science because I'm a science teacher. I'm not just a teacher that teaches anything. I've specialized to teach science. A subunit is a smaller piece within something. For example, if you have a Lego castle, each individual Lego is a subunit of the castle. So the organelles are like the little Legos that make up the big Lego castle of the cell. They're the little pieces that each have a little job that help the cell to carry out what it needs to do. Um, in the same way, a school is specialized and has little compartments that do different jobs in the school. So for example, in our school we have science classrooms, history classrooms, English classrooms, math classrooms, the cafeteria, the main office, the bathrooms, the locker rooms, the gyms, and so on. So each little section of the school is like an organelle of a cell. So the organelles of a cell have a specific job and they're specialized. They do something specific. Um, and then all of the organelles of a cell are very uh, similar to the classrooms in a school because each classroom has a specific function or a specific job. These are the cell parts that you need to know. They are not all technically organelles, but for now we're just going to think of organelles like cell parts. So we're going to lump all of these together. There are nine cell parts you need to know for our class. You need to know DNA, the cell membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, the nucleus, mitochondrion, vacuole, chloroplast, and cell wall. So let's break down each of these independently. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. For now, you don't need to worry about remembering what each letter stands for. Just know that DNA is your genetic information. It carries your genes. The DNA contains instructions that tell your cells how to make proteins. So your DNA looks like a twisted ladder. It's this shape right here. And basically, your DNA has all of these things known as nitrogen bases in them. Um, you don't have to know the specifics of that for now, but just know that your DNA is like a master recipe book that gives uh, your cell information on how to make all of the proteins that make up your body. The next cell part is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is also known as the plasma membrane. The cell membrane controls what goes in and out of a cell. The cell membrane is found on the outer edge of the cell, and it again regulates what goes in and out, kind of like a bouncer at a club that lets some people in the club, but not everybody in the club. Or like a screen door, um, the screen lets in air and light, but it does not let in bugs, hopefully, unless you have a big hole on your screen. If you were to zoom in on the plasma membrane, it's not really just a line. It's actually made of two main things, phospholipids and proteins. We'll take a closer look at the plasma membrane later. Just know that it's not really a line, um, so it actually looks like this if you were to zoom in. The next cell part we'll discuss is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm literally means cell goo. The cytoplasm is the goo that fills up the cell, almost like water that fills up a balloon. The organelles will float around in this goo. Remember, organelles are all of the different parts of a cell, um, and so the cytoplasm is all of the stuff. It, it almost looks like empty space, but it's not empty space. It's filled up with this gooey material known as the cytoplasm. Ribosomes make proteins. Ribosomes look like little dots. Another way of saying this is that ribosomes perform protein synthesis. Synthesize means to make. So synthesis is the process of making something. So for example, you could say Santa's elves synthesize toys, and a ribosome synthesizes proteins because it makes proteins. Again, our ribosomes look like little dots, and you can find them all over our cell. Some ribosomes float around freely through the cell, and then other ribosomes are attached to this big membrane known as the endoplasmic reticulum. You don't have to know about the endoplasmic reticulum for now. Just know that the little dots on the endoplasmic reticulum are ribosomes. 
The next cell part we'll discuss is the nucleus. The nucleus is like the boss of the cell. The nucleus holds DNA and controls the cell. So the little X's inside of the nucleus are your DNA. Your DNA actually comes in two forms. It comes in the chromosome form, which is packed up DNA, and it comes in the chromatin form, which is just loose, kind of squiggly DNA. So these X's are the chromosome form of DNA, but again, they're genetic information. And again, your nucleus is this big purple ball in this image, and it's not always purple. This is just a diagram, but that is our nucleus of the cell. Next, we have our mitochondrion. The plural of mitochondrion is mitochondria, so if you ever see it with um, D-R-I-A, that's just plural, more than one. So the mitochondrion breaks down food to release energy. So it takes your food, breaks it into smaller pieces, and releases energy from that food. A fancy way of saying this is cellular respiration. So cellular respiration is when the mitochondrion breaks down food to release energy. So your mitochondrion looks kind of like a bean that has these little squiggles inside of it. And the squiggles are almost in the shape of an M, so you can think M for mitochondrion. The vacuole stores things. The vacuole is almost like the locker of a cell. Plant cells are going to have a big giant vacuole, and animal cells will have several small vacuoles. We'll learn more about the differences between plants plant cells and animal cells later. Um, this picture is showing a small animal cell vacuole. And here's a plant cell. You can see that it has a much larger vacuole, also known as the central vacuole. So again, plant cells have a big vacuole. Animal cells have a couple of smaller vacuoles. The next thing we have is our chloroplast. Our chloroplast is like the solar panel of a cell. The chloroplast uses energy from the sun to make sugar. A fancy way of saying this is photosynthesis. So chloroplasts take energy from the sun and make sugars that are foods for plants. Since plants don't actually eat, they make their food through the process of photosynthesis. And plants use chloroplasts to do that. Next we have our cell wall. The cell wall provides extra structure and support in plant cells. In plants, the cell wall is made of a sugar known as cellulose. So the cell wall is on the outer edge of the plant. If you look at this image right here, you'll see there's a green layer on the outside and a yellow layer on the outside. If a cell has two layers, the outside layer is going to be the cell wall. All cells will have the cell membrane, also known as plasma membrane. So that's the yellowish layer that's going around the cell. But the extra layer, if a cell has an extra layer, is going to be the cell wall. So if a cell has a cell wall, it's always going to be found on the very outside part. So here's a recap. The cell parts you need to know are DNA, the cell membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, the nucleus, the mitochondrion, vacuole, chloroplast, and cell wall. So let's see what you know. So here's an animal cell. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out the different parts of that animal cell and label it. I'll put an arrow on each part and let's see if you can give the name of that cell part and its function. So the first is a layer on the very outside of the cell. It's the cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane. It regulates what goes in and out of the cell. The next part is the cytoplasm. It's the gooey material in which the organelles float around. It fills up the cell almost like water fills up a pool. This next thing is a round dot. It makes proteins and it's known as a ribosome. The next thing is our genetic information. It's our DNA. And this is DNA in the form of a chromosome. This purple circle is the nucleus. The nucleus holds the DNA and controls the cell. This is a mitochondrion. The mitochondrion breaks down food to release energy. Another way of saying this is cellular respiration. So the mitochondrion performs cellular respiration. This stores things. This is the vacuole. So here's a plant cell. Let's see if we can label the parts of a plant cell. All right, this big blob is a vacuole. Remember, plants have a large vacuole. Animals have several small vacuoles. And the vacuole is used to store things. This is the extra layer on the outside of plant cells. It's made of cellulose, and it's known as the cell wall. This is the layer that controls what goes in and out of the cell. It's the plasma membrane, also known as the cell membrane, and all cells will have this. This is the gooey material in the cell in which the organelles float around. It's known as the cytoplasm. These little dots, which can be found all over the cell, 
are known as ribosomes, and ribosomes make proteins. This is a mitochondrion. The mitochondrion breaks down food to release energy through a process known as cellular respiration. So mitochondria perform cellular respiration. This green thing is a chloroplast. The chloroplast almost looks like it has stacks of coins or stacks of pancakes inside. And the chloroplast use, uses energy from the sun to perform photosynthesis. Animals do not have chloroplast in their cells, but plants do. All right, this big purple circle is the nucleus. The nucleus controls the cell and holds the DNA. And these X's are DNA, they are chromosomes. So chromosomes are genetic information or DNA. So that's it for our video. Hopefully now you understand each organelle, what it looks like, and its function.